The COVID vaccine rollout is picking up speed thanks in part to the delivery of more vaccines and in part to the increased number of vaccination sites. Despite the accumulating evidence of the safety and efficacy of the vaccine, there are still many people who are hesitant to have their jab or jabs. A recent South African study found that amongst those who did not want to get the vaccine, the most common reasons were concerns about side effects and the overall effectiveness of the vaccine. There were also concerns that the vaccine was developed too quickly and skipped important quality controls. Plus, many people believe that they are not at high risk for COVID and if they were to get it, they'd rather use the opportunity to develop their own natural immunity. I can understand people's concerns about the vaccine. These are crazy times and there is a lot of information out there. Some true, some not so much. So it can be difficult to know what to believe. So let's address those concerns. First question, were there any quality control steps missed in developing the vaccine? No. The development of the COVID-19 vaccines did not cut corners on testing for safety and efficacy. The vaccines were made using processes that have been developed and tested over many, many years. Processes that are designed to make and thoroughly test vaccines quickly in a case of a sudden pandemic, just like the one we find ourselves in now. How could they develop the vaccine so quickly? Don't forget that it's been quite some time since a vaccine has been developed. The standard vaccine development process has previously taken years, sometimes even decades. But times and science have changed. Because additional resources and funding were allocated to the development of the vaccine, some of the steps used in the development were overlapped to gather data faster. Also, social media helped companies find and engage study volunteers. And because of the impact that COVID has had, it was quick to find sufficient numbers to help with vaccine research. Plus, because COVID-19 is so contagious and widespread, it didn't take long to see if the vaccine worked. So rest assured, these vaccines have been held to the same rigorous safety and effectiveness standards as all other types of vaccines. And are they just as effective as other vaccines? They are. For comparison, the MMR vaccine, which protects against measles, mumps and rubella, can be up to 97% effective at preventing measles when administered in two doses. Two doses of the polio vaccine are 90% effective, while three doses are 99 to 100% effective. The Pfizer vaccine, for example, was found to be 49% effective after the first shot and 94% after the second shot against the original COVID variant. Against the new Delta variant, it's 88% effective after both doses. What about the side effects of the vaccine? Most of the side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine are mild. They include low-grade fever, sore arm and fatigue, and these symptoms usually subside after a day or three. The chances of experiencing something like a blood clot are extremely, extremely low. The reality is that the risk of blood clots as a result of COVID-19 infection is around eight to 10 times higher than risks associated with the vaccine. Now, it is possible to have a reaction to any vaccine. And that's one of the reasons you're asked to sit for a while after your vaccination. Doctors are trained to identify and quickly treat any conditions that may arise. As far as long-term impact is concerned, vaccine monitoring has historically shown that side effects generally happen within six weeks of receiving a vaccine dose and are unlikely to happen after that time. Millions of people have received COVID-19 vaccines and no long-term side effects have been detected. What we have seen are the long-term side effects of COVID, so-called long COVID. People are suffering for months with fatigue, depression, shortness of breath, fevers and heart palpitations. But the latest evidence suggests that vaccination drops the risk of developing long COVID by up to 50%. In other words, the long-term benefit far outweighs any long-term risk. We know the technology used in the COVID vaccine is referred to as an RNA vaccine. Does this have any impact on someone's DNA or put them at risk for any kind of genetic condition down the line? The Pfizer vaccine is an mRNA vaccine and it teaches your cells how to make a protein or even just a piece of a protein that triggers an immune response. 
your DNA is safely packaged away within the nucleus of a cell, somewhere the vaccine material does not go. Once a cell is finished using the instructions from the vaccine material, the mRNA is quickly broken down and removed. So there is absolutely no risk of any DNA damage or interference. How does vaccine immunity differ from natural immunity if you've had COVID and recovered? There's not enough information currently available to say if or for how long people are protected from getting COVID-19 after they have had it. Early evidence suggests that natural immunity from COVID-19 may not last very long, but more studies are needed to get a better handle on that. The reality is that COVID-19 is not something most people are experienced with until it's too late. The value in having the COVID vaccine is that it prevents severe illness and disease. Yes, it's true that 90% will have mild to moderate symptoms and will recover, but what about the remaining 10%? These are the people who are severely ill and spend months in hospital, some with permanent organ damage and some never leaving. Even if you have had COVID, reinfection with the virus that causes the disease can occur again. If you had a mild version before, there's no guarantee you won't fall into that 10% with severe symptoms. Wouldn't you want to do anything you could to avoid that? I know I would. What about these breakthrough infections that we've heard about? Well, that just strengthens the argument for vaccination. It is still possible to have a COVID infection after the vaccine, but it's the severity of that infection that is different. In South Africa, 94% of breakthrough infections have been mild. There is also new evidence to show that immunity after the vaccine grows over time, so we're likely to see fewer breakthrough infections going forward. So if someone is still sitting on the fence, what would you like them to know about the COVID vaccine? After over a year of coronavirus closures, cancellations, disappointments and postponements, I think we're all yearning to return to work, school, sports, family celebrations and social activities. Though no one is sure when the pandemic will be over, everyone who vaccinates helps us move a little closer to the way things were or at the very least a new kind of normal. But the vaccine is about so much more than getting back to normal. South Africa is well known for its culture of Ubuntu, meaning we act in a manner which benefits our greater community. For me, the COVID vaccine is at the very foundation of Ubuntu because it not only protects individuals, but society at large and vice versa. It's not the vaccine that will stop the pandemic, it's the immunized communities that will. In med school, we had a basic acid test when it came to prescribing treatment for a patient, and it was simply this. Would you be happy to prescribe this for your grandmother? In a word, absolutely. I've had the vaccine. My wife has had hers, as have both of my older kids, and yes, so have their grandparents. Don't always believe what you read, especially if it has been forwarded to you many times. Social media plays a huge role in propagating myths and conspiracy theories. So take the time to push aside ideologies, fake news, beliefs and anxieties and learn all you can from reliable sources. Make an informed decision on that, not on what you've read on social media or heard from a friend. The decision to have a vaccine is a personal one and should always be made based on the facts and without undue pressure. But you must decide. Staying undecided is a decision and it's the worst kind. I understand the uncertainty, but this is no ordinary disease, so don't take it lightly. You can't afford to just wait and see. Rather, do your research, do it thoroughly and make a well-informed decision. Your life and well-being for years to come may well depend on it.